When we talked about atomic orbitals earlier in the course, we drew orbital energy level diagrams showing 1s, 2s, 2p, and so forth. We can do the same for the energy levels of molecular orbitals. These diagrams traditionally show the molecular orbital energy levels as well as the energy levels of the atomic orbitals from which they came. When we were drawing the shapes of the molecular orbitals, we kept talking about electron density generally being between the two nuclei, like in a bonding orbital, or outside the two nuclei, like in an antibonding orbital. What we've done is define two new orbitals, two new regions in space in the molecule where the electrons can dwell. Which one would an electron choose? As with most things in our course, it would make its choice on the basis of energy. Because the electron density is between the nuclei in the bonding orbital, the nuclei are attracted toward the center. Coulomb's law would tell us that the energy associated with opposite charges attracting is negative. What we'll find is that bonding molecular orbitals are always at lower energy than the atomic orbitals from which they came. Because the electron density is primarily outside the nuclei in the antibonding orbital and the nuclei are exposed to each other, the nuclei want to repel. Coulomb's law would tell us that the energy associated with like charges repelling is positive. What we'll find is that antibonding molecular orbitals are always at higher energy than the atomic orbitals from which they came. A molecular orbital energy level diagram is, by definition, a quantized picture. For dihydrogen, we've seen an energy diagram in figure 5.1 but it was a continuous plot of energy on the y-axis versus distance between the nuclei on the x-axis. For the energy level diagram, we are only going to pick out two points on the continuous plot. Zero energy, where the two atomic orbitals are far enough apart to give no interaction, and at the bottom of the curve, where you have the best interaction in the molecule. Our energy level diagram will have the same energies, but the diagram will be a one-dimensional energy plot on the y-axis. Traditionally, the atomic orbitals of atom number one are shown on the left, the atomic orbitals of atom number two are shown on the right, and the molecular orbitals of the molecule are shown in the middle. In the energy level diagram, the x-axis has no meaning and has no numbers associated with it. Often you will see dashed lines connecting the atomic orbitals with the molecular orbital. This is just to guide our eyes so we can see from which atomic orbitals the molecular orbitals came. It's obvious in dihydrogen, but it will be helpful later on with other molecules. So we have plotted the energies of the atomic orbitals and the energy of the sigma bonding molecular orbital with the same energy difference as in the continuous diagram. But we're only halfway there. We also have to add the energy of the sigma antibonding orbital. Remember that antibonding orbitals are at higher energy than the atomic orbitals from which they came. So the full diagram will look like this, again with the bonding orbital at lower energy and the antibonding orbital at higher energy. Remember that the energies of the atomic orbitals are shown on the outside and the energies of the molecular orbitals are shown in the middle. 